Okay, oops. Okay, I am I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if I can get back to my live feed. Okay, I'm here. Sorry about the technical difficulty. Not sure what's going on um, there. Please let me know if you can hear me okay. I see we have one person for now. Uh, John Iotis is here. Um, yeah, see so, someone type in whether uh, the sound is okay or maybe I'll type that in. Um, let me see. Is sound okay? All good. Sound is good. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Sorry about that. This is, I've had um, similar problems, not with the sound, but with the, with the video um, freezing and then people get a little frustrated and then they leave. Um, so sorry about that. You missed all my fantastic storytelling. I told about my trip to the Himalayas and how I, um, saved a thousand people from a uh, volcano. All true stories, by the way. Um, no. Okay. Um, so I'm, we just have three people here now. I guess a few people, it's going to take people some time to figure out that I ended that video and to come over here. Oh well, but they'll get a little, um, at least a notification, I think, if they're um, subscribed to my channel to say that I've started again. I think this highlight on the nose is just a little bit too high, so I'm going to try to bring that down a little bit. Okay, everyone can hear me now, but then I stop talking, so <laughs> go figure. It's like a silent movie, um, but at least there's some good painting going on, I think. I hope people are painting. I'm sorry, I really wasn't paying attention to my feed. I wondered why no one was putting anything, and the fact of the matter is it wasn't um, scrolling up, so I didn't see the new comments, so so sorry about that, and then people were saying that the sound was um, doing some weird things, and I didn't see that for a little while so hopefully I didn't lose too much of um, I mean I think actually I wasn't talking too much about uh, technical information I was just um, blathering on about different things and um, but that's okay okay so I really want to get this that sense of the roundness of her forehead it's um, See if I can get that with some of the value change and this um, smoothing out some of these colors and then losing this edge right here. That um, may help a little bit. And then um, get the right angle to her eyebrows and sh that shape here. And then we know that it's going to get lighter at the, at the top here going at the angle of the rest of the forms in her face and then the um, lightest part of her forehead is over here where it's um, getting pointing more directly towards the light so I'm gonna load up the white here and get it try to get it much lighter and then even lighter in a smaller area okay that's sort of helping but I also need to push some areas a little bit darker like right here and I can exaggerate that a little bit, uh, not getting too wild. And need to get a little more lights here to get sort of that. She almost has like this mask um, shape to the lights around her eyes. And I want to um, try to maintain that to get the some of the character of her face. 
and again I said the septum the bottom of the septum of her nose is just a little bit higher than the the rest of the nose and then there's a little bit of the reds around it so it's a little hard to see but I want to carve in a little bit to get that and then to make sure that I get the bottom edge of this other flare of the nostril that cuts in there and then again the philtrum if you don't know what the philtrum is I like to think of it as it filters <laughs> all that snot coming down out of your nose so I call it it's a good way even though it's not spelled that way I think it's a pH um, spelling um, it just helps me remember and so I'm really trying to get the sense of form um, drawing sort of around the mouth and they'll do the same around the eyes sort of these circular shapes that help um, um, reinforce the direction of the form I'm going to soften up this edge here and maybe go a little bit darker in the cheek there let that fade into the to the hair wisp of hair that are coming down so you really can't tell which is what which is the shadow in her face and which is the hair but that's okay and um, yes okay make sure that I'm not missing any of the feed by forcing it to scroll down okay we gotta get some of the wispiness of her hair here I want to get in kind of a grayish background to help reinforce the lightness in her face but just going to brush in some of that hair shape right now get a little more paint on the brush so I'm not scrubbing so much there we go and a little bit of um, Gamsol too mixed in there to loosen it up a little and interesting thing the way her hair is dropping down and it's sort of cutting into the shape of her neck almost makes it look like she has this very skinny neck and I think that's sort of adding to the that sense of it not feeling um, real like it's almost like a painting or something because of the the strange proportions that the, the way the hair is cropping um, her ears her neck and um, some of the flatness of her hair at the top of the painting um, almost exaggerates the the size of her head almost like it's a caricature um, not in a bad way I think um, it just is sort of it's interesting creates some interest okay I don't have her chin quite pointy enough so I have to go in and make sure that getting kind of that forms turning at the right amount of speed there okay so um, just going to continue to block in some of these shapes here. Need, I'm going to pull out my really big brush. I have a couple of them. I have one that's a filbert and the other that's a flat. Um, I think I'm going to do the flat. Try to get a little bit um, wetter paint to block in. Uh, kind of want like a grayish violet color. Just a little bit of um, blue and um, and the dioxazine purple in there. Uh, maybe I do want it a little bit greener. There we go. That color. That's the color I want. Yeah, I want a little more color in my color. There we go. So, one thing that helps. Um, create sort of that wet into wet all the prima painting technique is it's if you get two areas of color and value right next to each other and then you go back and forth um, between the two and get kind of hard and soft edges going that just um, 
you can just get some really beautiful effects um, working that way and um, and it really is what um, draws me in in terms of painting with oils that that kind of um, edge control that you can get that you can't get with any other paint and um, just love that let's try to get a big um, bunch of color here for the shoulders and the arm So I want this area of her chest, shoulder, and neck to be darker than her face. The same um, range of hue. You can get the edge of her blouse up here to let the viewer know that, um, that she does have something on. Occasionally I've cropped a photo so that like the evidence of clothing or kind of or outside of the edges of the photo and it really does um, change the the feeling quite a bit because you just there's that ambiguity of whether the person is completely naked or not and um, for better or for worse um, it does change um, the sentiment of the painting to get that shadow that comes in here that's their clavicle and, um, and then the part of the shoulder line here okay I think that's the shoulder line it looks like it right here you're seeing the line of the shoulder hair falling behind it and maybe a little bit of the light that's coming through the hair at that point so almost transparently. And then thicker hair that um, no light is penetrating. And I do want this kind of graphic where hair is. So I'm going to try to make this almost as black as I can um, with spots of um, highlights. So if I can get this kind of a nice, rich, flat black um, by coming down with fairly um, thin layers of black in succession, then that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to trim that ear a little bit. got a little bit too big. Okay, that looks about right. What I'm not getting is the not giving her quite as generous enough with the forehead here. Need to add a bit more and get the top edge reading correctly. That's feeling a bit better. Just squinting and comparing shapes and trying to see where forms are turning and little details that I'm leaving out that are helping um, describe what the form is doing. I can go in and be um, come back with finer details later, but I still want to kind of keep it to broad strokes. Okay, and I said their hair is kind of flat on top, kind of exaggerating um, the size of her head and um, and the size of her eyes for that matter too, which is why I think people gravitate to this, um, gravitated to this photo. Um, there's sort of lots of different things that are, uh, that are exaggerating the 
the size of her head and her eyes. Um, I talked about them, the cropping of her neck and her ear and the flatness of the hair on top. But that all um, is playing a supporting role to the actual painting of the eyes themselves. So I just want to make sure I get everything working and then I'm going to do as good a job as I can on the eyes because that is going to be um, the starring player in this painting. And it's not a bad idea to kind of make those decisions um, in the painting itself. I think people just do a painting and they think of it as just sort of copying the photo without making any real decisions about what they're trying to um, achieve with the painting. And so if you kind of think of it as a story that's being told and what it is that you want to be the main actors in the story, um, then you can come off with a much stronger painting. I'm going to just indicate where some of that jewelry is. Just a little bit of a sense of it there. Okay. So almost done blocking in the whole thing, covering over all the white so we can start to really judge values and colors and shapes. That's all there is, really. Colors, values, shapes, some little bit of changes of edges, and that's, that's the whole game. So we're about an hour and 20 minutes in. I said I was going to go to 11, so I'm going to do everything in my power to try to finish this up in the next um, 40 uh, minutes or so. And if not, sometimes I do a little bit of painting after I go offline. It's just easier for me to, to sit back and paint and evaluate without um, feeling like there's an audience waiting for me to put down my next brush stroke. So just um, so what I end up posting online sometimes is a, a little bit further along than where the video was or the stream was when I finished. Trying to get some of the smaller shapes in the ear to read. Okay, so the question is for me now, am I getting the, the um, right expression, feel, character of her face? It doesn't have to be super exact if I'm getting it to do the right things. Um, and again, now that I have the painting this far along, that's where this um, working in sight size comes in handy because I can, can I can quickly compare um, the painting to the photo to see where things might be off a little bit. I'm going to try to um, continue using this bigger brush for as long as I can because um, you get some really luscious brush strokes out of using a brush that's too big. If I go down to a smaller brush, and usually one that's um, much smaller than needed to do the size, then you just, um, you lose that quality of the brush work. Um, getting kind of a nice sort of um, Skip Lipke or Malcolm Lipke, if anyone's um, familiar with his work, kind of that interesting um, coloration that happens in his paintings. Not really by intention, but that's just sort of the way it's going, especially since I'm trying to continue to use this bigger brush and have the right uh, value structure to to get that sort of um, that lusciousness with the paint that his paintings tend to have. If you're not familiar with his work, um, just 
um, Google Malcolm Lipke, L-I-P-K-E-I. -E I, I know, I just butchered his name. Um, something like that. Beautiful work, just amazing work. He's been, his work has been evolving over time, but I've been watch, looking and watching his um, work um, since the late 80s. And just, he's someone that a lot of people copy the style of his work, um, but um, no one really um, does it quite as well. He um, he painted um, for a long time along with another painter, uh, Milton Kabayashi, whose work is in a way very similar. Um, and he's uh, the one person I can say that paints um, similar and as well. Um, but there's a lot of other painters out there um, that will go nameless that um, that do everything in their power to paint like him, but it's never quite as good. Okay, so trying, trying, trying to get the right shape of the eyes, the cheeks, the um, right distance of things. So that's going to be my main focus here, um, finishing up. If I do that for the next half hour, I think this thing will, will be just about where I want it. Especially if I stick to using this bigger brush and not get too um, picky with the strokes. Okay, just um, move that edge of the nose a little bit. Okay. Make sure, again, really working on getting that cheek to move away from us the right, the right speed. Carve in a little bit there. That's starting to look about right. Okay, got a nice glob of paint there on the nose, and that actually looks pretty good. Let's see if I can keep from... Um, Touching that for a little while. I may end up adjusting it later, but just let it um, be thick paint there. That'll probably take about three weeks to dry if I leave it like that. Okay, and fix that edge a little bit. I think I made that too light there, but I can come in with some pinks and knock it back. I'm really getting a lighter edge right here on the upper part of the lip. Okay, that's starting to starting to feel right. Got this little bit of darker area happening there along the cheek. Okay, uh, jawline. There's kind of little stripes of color there. You see the greenish. Um, area around the mouth, and then as it falls into shadow, goes warmer, cooler, sorry, warmer, um, darker. I say warmer, sort of reddish orange. And then I don't have that dark there quite enough, so a little bit of uh, alizarin permanent and mixed with the black. And then that shadow shape is really much darker, and then good amount of red orange happening in the neck there. Yeah, just a little bit more black coming in. Okay. You guys are getting very quiet again there, so it's making me nervous that um, 
that something's happening with the sound. Okay, yeah, look, someone spelled it out for me. Thank you, John, for um, for helping me out with my dyslexia. I always say I'm going to put in the, the notes in the video some of the things that I reference, but I never do go back and do it in the end, so don't want to promise um, people something that I know I'm not going to do. Okay, I'm starting to feel the surface of her face. That means like things are turning the right amount that it starts to become a convincing form and surface. And that's where I try to end up with most of my paintings, but sometimes I never quite get there. Okay, um, except for the jewelry and maybe getting this blouse dark enough, I don't really have to do so much more in the chest, except maybe I wouldn't mind it being the paint being a little thicker um, for interest, but I don't have to get every turn of the anatomy there right. It just really has to be indicated. It's really the eyes that I want to get. Um, and when I say the jewelry, okay, I have a dark line, but I could really just go in and put with this very big brush um, the, ref the highlight or the light reflecting off the metal. Doesn't really take a lot. I have the interesting piece of jewelry here, which can just be put in with a couple of brush strokes and and thin up that line a little bit if I get the right um, color. Um, there we go. Okay, doesn't take much. Okay, so what happens if I devote an hour, uh, sorry, a half hour of the rest of the painting just getting those eyes um, just to be perfect? Wonder how that. Um, Will work. I think I want to get some of this cheek color to be right and value just getting dark enough here. And then same on the other side, just a little more red that's coming in there. Yep, okay. All right, so let's do a little work on these eyes here. Sorry, did I bump the camera? Okay, I got my handy dandy little whittled down brush here. And getting kind of that bluish. And if I'm paying attention, there's the white of the eye actually comes all the way underneath, and then it kind of goes gray, very close to the iris color, iris, the value of the iris, I should say, so that you almost don't see it, but it's there. And then that eyelid then comes up very quickly and down very quickly on the other side with some eyelashes. And those
those eyelashes are also there in the near side. Okay. Just, I'm pulling the eyelash down a little bit too much on that far side. So it almost looks like it's cutting into her eye and that isn't right. So just making some of these tiny little adjustments until it does, until it reads like um, glassy looking eye. And a little bit of the blue coming in in that reflected light. And then right near the iris, the white of the eye is just the lightest right there. So I want to come in with a little more white. Just a touch that I can then rub into the paint that's already there to give it a very soft transition. And then we can't forget the grayish um, corner of the eye and then the tear duct. Let's soften this up still. Have to go lighter in this transition here between the lightest light and the that grayish area. And it still looks wrong to me in my eye, and it's because I don't have that lid of her eye, the upper lid, dark enough. Don't have the separation in the lid here. pretty close except for the top of the lid is much lighter here okay that's not not too far off there's a few things that are just not um, drawn in correctly that are making it feel a little bit weird but can fix those easily enough. Oh, it's got really warm here tonight. Okay, let me see. Missing my comments. Sounds good. Looks great. Okay. Okay, somehow I got stuck on that smaller brush, even though I'm not on the eyes at the moment. So let's um, force myself back up with that bigger brush, soften up some of those forms. Okay, now I can go to my smaller brush and look at where some of these things are. Okay, I got the point of that. <coughs> the point of the corner of the eye. Try to bring it down far enough. There we go. And then there's a light that comes in right up into that very edge. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this near eye. Let me get actually get a little more light here while I'm at it in that reflected light. Okay, great. That looks pretty good. Have the bridge of the nose too dark, so I'm going to just go ahead and throw in kind of in a messy sort of way, that lighter color. Too messy, okay. Missing the light that's on the far edge here. That's a little bit better. And I don't have the iris coming up high enough on this side. Okay, now I can get that generous area of white 
on this side. Okay, messed up the edge of that iris a little bit, but that's not too hard to fix. Okay, how are we doing time-wise? About 20 minutes left. I don't think it's looking too bad so far. Um, lots of little things I can correct, which I will. Sorry about that. I just bumped right into the mic. Okay, cover over your ears. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Adjust the hairline up here a little. Make sure I get those sort of warm shadows that are coming in here. I really um, want to get that ear shape right and where the hair is cropping in. And then we got a little bit of jewelry here. So I'm not going to go crazy with the jewelry and just going to put in a dark dark almost black under painting and then I can come right on top of that with a highlight which will give it that kind of metallic look okay well I completely covered over that dark but that's okay you get the idea and then there's a little bit of highlight in reflecting out of her ear so it's kind of a cool light there and we have that sort of darker shadow coming in here just painting it the way I see it can't go wrong when you do that okay and a little more detail Sorry for the heavy breathing. <laughs> okay. Um, so, not too far off. Um, it's not quite perfect yet. Or it's never going to be perfect, but not quite where I want it yet. Okay. This edge right here is very important because it tells you where the her cranium is so I need to give that enough um, enough room and still can do quite a bit of work around her eyes I think I'm gonna take some of that offline so I can get it just to where I want it Okay, I'm going to see what I can do with this bigger brush to soften up some of those transitions before I call it a night. So, are there people out there that are painting right now? I know I didn't really get a since maybe some people are going to do the painting at a different time, but then um, post their uh, results. Like I said, if I can get um, 
files from you afterwards and I'm happy to post it to my um, to my Instagram page let's get a little bit of the reflected light in this cheek here you don't really see it so much but you know it's there because there's little flecks of light and you know that's right where the light would be reflecting back. To get those highlights to read, I also have to make sure that there's enough darker paint around it, even if it's grayish. That's also that those kind of neutral tones are an important part of the whole thing um, pulling together especially in areas like this underneath the eye that's not um, really white but it's more like a neutral gray and where there is light um, need more white where there is light, like in the corner of the eye, those neutral grays are going to help that read. And it's taken me a long time to figure out um, that I really need those kind of transitional elements in there that are quite neutral to get the whole thing to, to pull together. It's sort of like the in-between that it's really hard to see. Where you, you get attracted to the lights and the darks and the strong colors. And it's really hard to see those sort of neutral passages that are in between. Let's see if I can get that eyeshadow color working. Almost the pure red right there, but darker. And then goes to an area that's almost black. Now I did what I wasn't planning on is I'm painting these smaller shapes in the eye with the with the biggest brush that I've got. Not really a, a very um, what's the word? Not not really a practical way to do it, but if it helps me keep the paint nice and loose, then maybe in the end it will work out. Sometimes I like exaggerating those highlights, getting the area around it darker, and then really getting those highlights to pop. Just as long as it's not overdone, then it can look really nice. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit lighter again on the bridge of that nose. And I can really play up the reflection there. Yeah, that looks nice. Again, I can do that here. I may be at risk of overdoing it just a little bit. But better than having a boring painting, right?
Okay, so about 10 minutes uh, to go here. Um, a few things that I just want to stress for those who are with me. Um, let me see, there's about nine watching. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I highly um, recommend that you do so. That lets you know when I do um, post a video or do a live session, that then you're notified. But along with um, subscribing, there's a little bell that's next to it that you want to um, select also. And that uh, ensures that you get notifications. Otherwise, it's up to YouTube's algorithm to decide whether you get notified or not. Um, and so um, I think that's really helpful. It helps me as a channel because more people are notified when I do go live. And then it also then because I get a little more um, juju points when more people turn in than it does then recommend it to other people who wouldn't have normally seen um, the video. So for those reasons, I do recommend that you um, you subscribe to my channel. And I have a few other things going, and I highly re recommend that you um, check them out. Besides my Instagram page, which has tons of examples of my work, um, I also now have, have an Etsy shop, which I'm trying to get um, put um, reproductions and originals um, and um, also I'm making some posters out of my work giving a little bit of a graphic treatment um, for people who want something a little more um, um, accessible than just um, paintings of me painting other people and um, so please check out my Etsy shop um, buy lots of things too while you're there um, and I do also have on there if you're curious or um, or interested but just even out of curiosity I have an item there which is my um, portrait commission um, item if you are looking to contract me as a portrait artist that's a good place to get um, a bit of information about pricing and size etc um, and so if any of you also are thinking about um, or have started um, getting commissions to do portrait work, um, you can just see what it's helpful that I put my information out there so you can see um, how I approach that from at least um, pricing um, and marketing point of view. Um, and so, yes, check out my Etsy shop. I want to see a little more traffic there. Um, it's just, like I said, there's about 15 to 20 items. I really like to get it so that there's about 100 separate items in there. Make sure that this, um, that these elements in the nose are, you know, coming together and gelling together so have to pull the tip of the nose more over and have the nostril cut in um, further over too let's come on up just a touch higher okay um, and then this really does come to a point i'm sorry i keep on bumping into the um, cable that's connected to my camera so if you see the whole thing jiggling around I really apologize let's get some of that um, little bits of um, moistness uh, by throwing some little white spots in there okay so 5 to 11 I am very close to signing off here. Thank you very much, everyone who's um, tuned in tonight and um, supporting my channel and giving me great comments and um, just coming back week after week, too. Some of you there I know, um, Lady J 
has come back quite a bit. Um, there's some people I don't see here tonight, but I know that they will come back and um, watch it um, different times. So if you're coming in later and watching this replay, thank you very much for that. And um, I am happy to continue doing these um, these tutorials. I know that a lot of people do charge for um, this information. I kind of feel like the time that it would take for me to figure out how to monetize this, I would um, probably not be getting so much money and I would be really cutting into my painting time. So it's just happy to just make it um, pretty straightforward, simple. I know that's what my followers are interested in seeing and I'm happy just to paint and turn the camera on while I do it. And um, so um, I will continue to do that and please um, come back um, following weeks on Tuesday nights if I I'll try to keep it at this time as long as it works and um, like I said happy to do that um, what else can I tell you oh um, also trying to build up my Facebook page a little bit I do have a site that's um, up and running but I haven't updated it in a while so a lot of that work on there is older um, and I just realized recently that my contact form is not functioning properly. So people who've tried to contact me in the past through that, I've totally missed their their emails and stuff. So that's a little bit too bad. I kind of feel like I should just throw up an, an email address or something, but then all those spam bots um, go crazy on me. Okay, just getting there. Let's cut in a little bit more in that forehead and come in a little bit higher on this top edge. Okay, um, so last couple minutes here. So um, I think that's it for right now. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you in future weeks. Please subscribe, like, and um, also very important, I forgot to mention, is after the um, feed is ended, please throw in some comments because those are what people will see, not necessarily your um, chat comments. Um, please give a thumbs up and share with other people. And I um, hope to see you next week, and I'll post this um, painting as soon as I'm, I'm done with it, which should be in the next day or two on my Instagram feed, so or Instagram page. So thank you all, and have a good night. Uh, good night.